Hey, hey, you ain't have to watch, but you did. Now, I appreciate that. Now, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. I identify as a multimillionaire. What's up, YouTube? We back with another one. Yep, some more Whack 100 content from the 100 Side of Clubhouse. Make sure you follow all the rooms on the 100 Side because they got content running over there 24-7. Now, Whack was in the room with some of the 100 Side members talking with that boy Spanky Hayes. Ooh. Now, Spanky Hayes is a weird name to me, but then again, what name ain't weird? What the hell is a Michael anyway? Now, I tried to create a nickname to make it easier on myself, but I didn't want to call a man Spank. Mm -mm. And seeing as how Hayes came directly after that, it was out of there by default. So for that reason, and for the sake of this video, this <laughs> name is Jamal. Jamal said he and a group of friends came up with the original concept for Wild and Out. They would act out different skits and finish the show with a freestyle session. Nick Cannon was around at the time, probably observing, admiring, and soaking up game. Now by Nick Cannon being more successful than these guys, he runs in circles that they can't. So in these circles, he bumps into popular, powerful people. And one of those people he bumped into was Will Smith. Yeah, I said Smith with an F and the other is still named Jamal. And according to Jamal, Will Smith was the one who told Nick Cannon to create the show. Now my average life living ass definitely wasn't at the table when that conversation was had, but I'm sure it was more of Will Smith giving Nick Cannon the encouragement to move forward with creating the show as he was already sitting back and planning for the ideas that he already had. Yeah, that sound about right. Plus, Nick Cannon already had the access, the resources, and the relationships to produce the show on a level to where it can become something bigger. Instead of a group of dreamers doing it in a local neighborhood hall, in front of a bunch of family members and close friends, and the resources needed just ain't in that group. Stop hating, bro. Did Nick Cannon steal the show? I don't know, but ain't that what a performer's supposed to do? Look, get you a lawyer. Don't be scared to present non-disclosure agreements. Operate with your mind, not your heart, because they're going to say they love you and call you brother. This is my brand new brother. But on the flip side, don't be afraid to sell an idea either. If you're as creative as you say you are, then it shouldn't be a problem coming up with something. Maybe not immediately, but certainly eventually. Like Nick Cannon said, why hold on to 100% of nothing? And like Wax said, I'd rather get 2% 200 times than nothing at all. But hey, like my bro say, I reserve the right to be wrong. And like I say, I identify as a multimillionaire. Naughty Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Go ahead and get crazy down in the comments. You can hit if you want. It's all love, yup. And he the first comedian. Right, he gonna say, I'm, I'm the first one. I put <laughs> spaghetti on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Nobody knows you know what about Nick Cannon? Is Nick Cannon a, uh, considered Nick a comedian? Nick be stealing people's jokes. He be stealing people's stuff. He be stealing people's material. Oh. Give up homage. Hey, Nick Nick Cannon stole the whole while and out from me. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, what? Hey, what? Hey, what? Hey, what? Ask, ask Nick in the, in the car. Ask Nick in the car by himself. I guarantee you. Give it up. Thank you. Don't nobody know you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, bro. This is how I know that's cap. No, that ain't cap. I, I got paperwork, everything to show that, just like a arrest. I got everything. I got all the evidence. Spanky, don't know what that that do from my homegirl practice. Hold on. Let, let, let Wack and Spank talk. Go ahead. Oh, nobody this know you, Spanky. You party, okay. Words can't get a major event this party. Come on, bro. Listen, I'm going to oh. tell you something. I'm going I'm to be totally honest. This this ain't Sunday yet, so I can't say it's Sunday. But I'm gonna be, I'm gonna act like this Sunday morning. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. 2000, it was a group called the Other Level. It was four guys from Detroit called the Greyhound to L.A. Nick Cannon was my first friend in Hollywood. When, when we first started doing Wild and Out, we all had a deal with Will Smith over Brook Productions. We had one. Nick had one. Four years later, come. Nick come to me and call me and say, hey, man, I got a new show. I'm going to put you on it. It's kind of like what y'all do. So you tell me. Mm. What you and, mean? And, and I'll die for that. I'll die for that. What you mean it's kind of like you what y'all do? That sounds like some matrix. clout chasing to me. Yeah, don't hey, nah. you no, no about, clout bro? chasing. It ain't no clout chasing. I, no, I'll no, say this in front of Nick. Nigga, you know this. incredible stopping you from saying what you want. That is kind of like what y'all do. Incredible. I'm trying to tell you something. Just real talk. Real uh, talk. You, so you telling me you own the show? No, 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 no. I don't own the show at all. Nothing like that. Yo, you nothing know this like room that. is being recorded, right? Yeah, that's great. There's Bro, nothing like to that. There's one thing I know about Nick. If Nick, if that was a situation at at minimum, he'd have made you a been. Listen, at the time wow. he was all young. We was all young, whack. Nobody Nick, had control of none of that. 
It don't matter. He Nick, 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 Nick broke ain't changed up. He now he did. Listen, 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 listen. Let me, let me, let me uh, make point of your point that you just made. Right? He did. He did look out for me. He put me on the show. He could have just took the show and not even put nobody on the show. He, now, he made me, a lot of niggas from that show. Cat huh? Williams, or Corey. Yeah, but Holcomb, I'm talking about this before Cat Williams got there. Right? This before any of them got there. Kevin this Hart. Is, all them niggas this before them. any of them got there. This before so, all of them got there. So what, so what I'm doing? telling you is, what show was you doing? Yeah, facts. That's okay, we saying was, that he, he just, okay, he just, we he just was, said it, but he said it was called Another Level or some shit. We were called said. The Other Level. Other you can level. look this up. This is all facts, Wack. This is all facts. Okay, The Other Level. Okay, okay. so we... And y'all was doing listen, what? We was doing the whole Wild and Out show. We would do skits and rap at the end. We were, it was four of us. So uh, when we got when, when Nick got the deal, he was doing roll bounce in Chicago. I was doing comedy out there. He called me to the set. I went to the set. He showed me the demo. He was like, yo, this is what we're going to do. Just, just like what y'all do, but I'm going to put you on the show. Now, let me just say this. It was four of us. So that means it was three members of that group that didn't get, never touched the Wild and Out brand at all. So, dude. That was that was like he took our show. Yo, this but no, so let me get this right. So let me get this right. So you saying that uh, Cool Mo D stole how to rap from Curtis Blows? What you saying? No, he I don't know. Neither one of them dudes. They, he just did it better. Come on, bro. We talking no, 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 no. Uh, well, Come I don't on. know who did it better, but I'm Chef telling you, Ron who got stole the deal? Six. Come on, bro. If I'm he, trying to tell if you who got named the deal. It, if he would have named it your show, then you could yeah, say that. Come on, Other bro. than that, right, you can't Come on, bro. Listen, that don't, that don't mean the same Nick thing. Nick, Nick right. the actor, a rapper, I'm a, I'm and a comedian. I'm going to let you finish, then I'm going to say what I'm going to say. Nick is the actor, a rapper, and a comedian, bro. All he's doing is mixed up the things he like to do on one show. That's all he did. So what? Let me say this. Let me give you another point. Another fun fact. I coached Nick Cannon and taught him how to do comedy. Spanky Hayes. He Yo, used let to me go, ask you a question. Let, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. He used to go. He used to I go. I be tripping to, off you niggas that be claiming these other niggas. But bro, then when we I'm, look I'm at y'all accolades, shit. we like, I'm, what the fuck is going on with you? Niggas say he created I'm trying to tell you, you Listen, you ain't got, nigga did everything follow, for everybody, bro. everybody but my himself, man, bro. My man How about three, this? My man got three likes on his Twitter. Hold on, man. Let the nigga How about talk, this? Man. How about this? You can love it or or like it, but I'm telling you what happened. So How about this? this? How about this? I'm How about... I just arranged for Nick to come on here, then we let y'all talk about it. Please. Ooh. About it. Please. Ooh. No problem. Please. <laughs> that ain't no problem. Uh, I want my Listen, problem. Nick, Cannon, Nick Cannon no Spanky Hayes. Nick yeah. Cannon no Carlos. I ain't saying Quick. knowing, but I'm pretty sure he ain't going to let the nigga come on here talking about nigga, I trained you how to be a comedian. and I, I guarantee you he say, listen, listen, Wack. I guarantee you he That's say, right. yeah, yeah. Nick Cannon might smack the shit out of you, gang. Man, whatever. Whatever, bro. Come on. Now we talking about some money. Now y'all want me to make some money. But what I'm saying to y'all is I'm a real street hey, I'm a real street nigga that do comedy. So I'm telling y'all some like real Nick Cannon run off with y'all shit. Spanky, are you on these Because he years? had to listen, listen. You gotta let me answer. You gotta, you gotta let me answer. Because listen, this is this is how starving artists go, bros. And, and this go to everybody. We don't, at that time and place, when it was all going down, nobody cared. Nobody was mad that Nick got a deal. Nobody was mad. We was all rocking together, all of us, all for it. Nick Cannon was like damn near in the group, and I'm telling you, because he used to hang around us so much. He was 16. I was 18. I was older than him. So so he, we would all hang together. And I taught him how to dress. You should dress like this. You should be like this. You should talk like yeah, this. Don't be like a little... I'm, no, I'm not lying at all. Dude, this ain't no cap. Uh, oh, and this other man, comedians. Get his shit off, man. Listen, it's other comedians that will validate what I'm saying. I don't got to lie about this. I didn't make nothing from that except for the checks that I made. I didn't make nothing extra. I'm not I, I'm not even looking for nothing. I'm just trying to tell you what happened. So this that, that so all of us came from Detroit, the other level. We had a show. We were showcasing around Hollywood everywhere. Everywhere. So but we didn't get a deal four years later. Uh, Will Smith, either Will Smith 
came to Nick and said, you should do that. Or Nick said, hey, I'm about to do that. They ain't doing it no more. So he did it. And then, and then here's another fun fact. When I quit the show, I would complain so much about, dude, you can't fire me and y'all doing my show. That's when they start hiring rappers to change the show. Bro, if it was just show, <clears throat> would you even agree to just go on the show? It's like, a, Look, like, sound like a, hey, dude, we was, listen, that. listen, we was all broke in Hollywood eating oodles and noodles, four niggas on one bowl. Hell yeah, I'm gonna let the nigga do it as long as he giving me a paycheck. Yeah, I'm because nah. this saved yeah, my now life. Now you on here crying wolf though? Nah, I'm not crying shit, bro. I'm trying to. My story never changed. So I'm pretty trying to much tell you what something. you're saying is you let the nigga jack you for your car and put you in the back seat. <laughs> that's how it was. That's exactly that's what happened. Because if I created that's how it was. Shit. So that's how it was. Thank you. How 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 was the last was the last season? I'm gonna tell you this, bro. Like, just ask him, like, Wack. Just like, ask him, and then, ask, the nigga, then say something. Just because the nigga took your format and did it better, you can't say he took it from you, my nigga. But, right. but you can't say he did it better because he right. added me to make it he to make it did it better. better. That nigga like 19, 20 seasons in, bro. Stop the Of cap. course. And I did 12 of them. So come on, man. Now hey, you gotta hear what I'm saying a little shit. bit. He employed you. Hey, hey, Spanky. Oh, that's hey, the gangster shit, you claim right? in my nigga. That's, that's the gangster shit. shit. <laughs> hey, I never said he wasn't gangster. I just said he took my idea. That's gangster. Damn, bro. So let me ask you something, Spanky. You got no Let me ask you something. Why you ain't? Why you ain't took another idea, birthed it, and knocked on Nick Doe? Because you know if that's what it was. He, say you they, know he aligned you up for it. You know they, that. Niggas say well, they I, made to be, holes, to be made honest, holes. so so to be honest, that, let me answer that, Wack. To be honest with you, uh, I never even looked at it like that, bro. I mean, I wasn't even, I'm not trying to one-up the nigga or nothing like that. I'm just trying yeah, to tell you, you what happened. No, I'm just telling you information, bro. We talking about comedians and how comedians yeah, got yeah, on yeah, it yeah. Nah, to it, a certain it didn't. point. I'm going to give him that. Yeah. It didn't sound like, it didn't he, it didn't sound like, like he started. Yeah, he didn't come up like he was trying to shit. He no, sound like he was. It sounded like he was just basically trying to say what it, like he said, what it was. You no, know? I'm not shitting on Nick. I love Nick. I, I just. I just yo, why nah, you why you why you nah, why you nah, put, nah, 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 we ain't doing nah, that. So, so you can't, well, I can't love it. So you hey, hold on, listen, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nah, you, but you listen to me. Nick. I know Nick Mama. I know Nick know my mama. Nigga, I know all I Nick brothers. Nigga. I hang with Nick brother right now. Though this this is my family. I'm just telling you a situation that happened. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna stick to my guns. You I don't care what y'all keep saying. You I'm still gonna say the same thing. Nick Did brother with the big ass. Hey, you cool hey. with his brother? Bring him on the app to vouch for what <laughs> you're saying. Big ass, big oh, I, ass could, I could call Gabriel. <laughs> I could call Gabe. I could call Ruben. I could call Caleb. I know all of these dudes, bro. This, this like family me. I'm just telling y'all the situation. If Nick get mad, that's what Nick get mad. I don't give a fuck. Hey, did you he ever, know that I'm no, you saying trolling. some real shit? You can't be mistaken with disrespect. Did you ever talk to Nick about this, or did you? Is of, this the first of time? Of course, of course. I talked to to Michael Goldman about this shit. Ask Michael Goldman. Uh, whack. You know Michael Goldman. Ask him. That was my manager too, by the way. Ask yeah. him. I'm dropping names yo, like yo, I can't yo. like not nothing. I can't not know nothing. You hear these names I'm dropping? Yeah, I'm you not trying to that. disrupt this shit. I just got one last question. Why did you quit? Word. I quit because I was getting disrespected because I okay, so so okay, here's a small scenario. When we moved to uh MTV two, it was a smaller budget. So it went from one number that we were making to all the way dropping all the way down to back new again. Okay. So that wasn't a that was a problem, but that wasn't the main problem. The main problem was the directors and the and the uh and the producers in New York and MTV two didn't really know the show. So we were like directing on stage. We was telling them everything to do. So one day I said, well why can't I get a, a check for this? Cause I'm like directing, why, and I'm like, why are you saying right? we? And I'm you like, was, why are you saying we? You was an employee. Keep going. Yo, let him finish. Let that man finish, bro. Then you can say what you because say. when I say we, you got to remember it was Afion. It was uh, the first crew. I'm talking about the first Wild and Out crew. So when we had to go back on on MTV Two, we felt a little disrespected because everything we built up, we had to kind of teach 
the the new people which i mean i guess that ain't all the way bad but it just felt bad at the time and then we wasn't getting the money that we used to get so all of that kind of seemed kind of like some bullshit so i would complain all the time like dude man why i can't do this or why i ain't getting this or come on man come on nick come on nick and then the producers the, the producers were getting mad at me this man off Thank you, Mom. The producers were getting mad at me because I was saying the right shit. And, and then they would go, I'm, I'm sure, I'm not, I can't put a hundred on this, but I'm sure they would have to talk to Nick eventually and be like, what's up with this guy, Spanky? Why is he doing this? Or why is he saying this? Or why is he has his attitude? And I'm sure he had to say, well, he was here in the beginning. So he knows, uh, you know, he knows how this show run and all that. And we wasn't getting like respected for that. So I was like, dude, I'm, I'm getting the fuck out of here, bro. This ain't worth it no more, man. Like, like I love this shit and I love being a part of this, but it ain't worth it no more. So when I quit, I, and then I used to say, look, bro, now if I quit, you can't do the same format, bro. You got to kind of change this. And then all of a sudden, Conceited comes out of nowhere. Then, then the rappers, this rapper, and then that rapper. And then let me say something else, whack, because you know I got love for you, whack. I'm fucking with you. But listen, I'm the person who brought Smack to the show. Smack. I'm the smack? person. Spanky Hayes brought whack to the show. I mean, not whack, I'm sorry. Uh, Smack to the show. Because now, if we all know the history of Wild and Out, what Smack started putting his best rappers on the show. Why? To change it. Why? Because I was complaining so much about not getting paid the right amount, not this ain't happening. I was mad. So I was like, no, bro, this can't happen like this. So they got rid of me and started putting rappers on the show. So this show won't be like how we started. Now, we all got to agree on this line right here that while and out ain't the same as how I started. I'm telling you why. True indeed. And then they said, because and that's on like my grandma. Uh, uh, Spanky, I got this. Like, I got a question, but wasn't, but wasn't some of the battle rappers there while you were there? They, they Only, didn't come after no, you. Left. No, they weren't. Conceited was the first battle rapper on Wild and Out. Yeah, nah, Conceited. They, they wasn't there. And Spank, was it? Is it true that they started reaching out to these, um, like Instagram comedians because they the less pay they didn't have to. And it yeah, was because because you don't have to pay them. You don't have to pay them as much. Yeah, like like Atheon or Corey Holcomb or 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 me or whoever a comedian, you have to pay them more because that's a craft that we doing. Mm -hmm. the, the the internet people are doing comedy from their cell phone. Like I remember when some of them dudes would come when they first started coming, we used to have to tell them don't look directly in the camera, bro, because they look they used to doing it on their phone, looking right directly in the camera. There ain't nothing I'm saying is cap. I go to I go to heaven with yo, the same bro, story. Yo, bro, where would your life be, right? If Nick Cannon didn't give you that job, I I would never know. Nah, this, I would this never know. Where you would be right now. You wouldn't be on this stage, right? But no, I was always on the stage. I was always a comedian. How, how nah. don't we know he would be on the stage if Nick Cannon didn't get him that job? We don't know that. No, he didn't. He didn't put me on stage. He just gave me the job. When he got a deal. He gave me a job. I asked that because you said y'all was all broke eating oodles and noodles. I have very good listening skills, right? So right. If he was eating oodles and noodles to a nigga giving you steak. Why are we on this app talking about what he didn't do with like all that? Yeah, but I don't think yeah, bro. He ain't. He not, he no, man, but you're taking it. You're taking it. You're not discrediting that. No, I never, I never discredited that. Shit I'm just trying to tell you what happened. I never discredited him. Like, like Wax said, that was gangster. Yeah, that was gangster what he did. That was my friend, so I went along with it. I was broke too, so I went along with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's what so I'm saying. Like, like whatever, you went along it. with it. And then listen, you listen, AR, AR, you pushing it too Bro, hard. Really? Like, it's not that serious. Like, he's like, he just telling a story. You feel me? Like, you cannot change what beef. he did. That's, this is his you life. This is yeah. what happened. Like, fight back, like, Spank. Fight back. Swing. Come on, Craig. Hey, I'm in. No, the only, the only one, bro. Listen, Get up, Craig. Can I just say, I'm and the only reason why I'm butting in is because Spanky, you know, you my guy, this lady killer, aka Taina. So, oh, okay. Who? You know Yo, I'm, I'm gonna just say one last thing. I swear I'm gonna mute my mic, right? So no, I just, I despise, no. I despise people that say like right credit from other people, bro. That's no, but that, the, but, the, but <laughs> my brother, light and you read more into it than yeah. what it is. Like, exactly, my brother. <laughs> let me, let me, let me clear this for you. Let me clear this for you. I'm not taking no credit from nobody. I'm just telling you 
what the happened. Story, right. So you you can take it however you want to, but if you ask me ten years later or two days later, I'm gonna tell you gonna the, the exact same, same thing because that's how it happened. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's Hollywood, guys. That's show business, guys. That that's how it goes in show business. They take just like in football, you wouldn't hire a 38 year old uh, punter. You're gonna get a 20 year old punter. That's how it happened. Like I said in the beginning, I was 18. Nick was 16. Of course, you're going to pick the young one. You're going to pick the young guy, which I have no problem with that. That's life. That was a, that was a dear, that's still a dear friend family. We all family. I talked to Nick Cannon family more than I talked to him. Like I know this guy. So he had somebody approached him with a deal. He took the deal, took the idea for the show and put his main guy on the show. I mean, you can look at that as gangster, punk shit, whatever. That's what happened. With the deal, not I was true. broke enough to agree with it. Hey, did you feel away about it at the time? Of, of course, but if you remember the first beginning of Wild and Out, I was like, the I was the Stephen Curry. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah, remember. Yeah, you, you was, yeah, you was a superstar on the show. That's a fact. That's a yeah, fact. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And that was because it all came from me, guys. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. And, so you're not doing business with him no more. Why Nick ain't give you no? No, that's my ownership. friend. That's my brother, why man. If he, not ever, if he if he called me right it, now, y'all niggas ain't listening. Y'all niggas is here with y'all. Oh, when they yeah, exactly. Y'all 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 know, that's a legitimate question. I'm like, do you have business? Yeah, like, it's something to work. The man said he's fight with the family. Them is his ace brothers. Those are his brothers. All he did was tell us about how this how comedy went for him. Period. That's, That's all he did. That's it. I don't hate the fence. The niggas kicking to their forties. Why he didn't give you part ownership? Because I don't. I because he that. was young. Because he was young, and I don't even think that. Well, if you remember, Nick didn't really own the show except the beginning of it. Like he he had to sell the show. What about fifth season, sixth season? He didn't own it no more. So he, so here's here's another thing that y'all can remember. Remember when Wild and Out first came out? It was three images bef- on top of the Wild and Out. It was the guy pointing to the left. That was me. It was the guy in the middle. That was Nick. It was the guy on the right. That was Atheon. Look at the old look at the old logo of Wild and Out, and you'll that's see what I'm fact. saying. That's a whole fact. Yeah, you the OG. That's me. That's me, Nick, and Atheon. How many years? Nick, how many years ago was that? Uh, I think we started in two thousand five. Uh, that, so the other level that I was telling y'all about the group, we got our deal in 2000. While and out didn't come out to 2005. So y'all do the math. And it's okay. Yeah, it's Damn. okay. I'm, I'm I'm never mad about it because, again... No, not he, for you, Spank. He not added, for you. Yeah, he added me in. So how could I be mad? No, <laughs> not you. I'm talking about the audience. Right. <laughs> I'm not that big girl, he, and it's he's okay. He's telling his story. It's just like if I right. came up here and told my story, and somebody keeps telling me, "Well, why you ain't do this? Or well, why you ain't do this?" Nigga, right. You don't know what happened. This was like twenty some years ago. Like, damn. Yo, like, somebody, somebody was right. telling his story. story. I told big girl how to braid, and, and, okay. okay. and it's okay. And it's okay. Big girl braid. Yo, so and it's okay. So, and it's okay. <laughs> Y'all no, read the I comments. Put, Somebody I, made a I good. I put the comedy scene heavy, so I see what they do to y'all. I I know Tiff. I know you know Corey. I I fuck with D Rays. I fuck with Mo Better Mondays before they became D Rays. So exactly, I, a lot of comedians. You get what I'm saying? And I watch how this shit go. They give Kevin a lot of flack for bringing Tiff up. They say Tiff don't deserve it, but I watch Tiff go up night after night. You get what I'm saying? So right. hey, know, Tiffany, Tiffany is the. Epitome of a uh, LA chick. Nigga, and she comedian. still live in Inglewood. That's my that. nigga. You know and D Ray and Spank is actually related in real life. People yeah, that's my that. cousin. DeRay is DeRay. Yeah, DeRay yeah. is my cousin. Hey, hey, I when I hey ran you know what's crazy? That nigga, I was like, yo, Spanky, my cousin. He was like, nigga, Spanky, my cousin. Oh, he was like, nigga, mm-hmm. if you know Spanky, nigga, what's his father name, nigga? <laughs> I was like, hey, all you had to do is say fucking name, nigga. All you had to do is say Jesus, because uh, I don't, I don't know my father, so, <laughs> so, so and he know that. Yo, did y'all see the back channel? See, they asking a hundred million dollar questions in the back channel. See, this is what I'm talking about. I just feel like you kind of, I don't know. 
they saying was exactly what how I'm feeling in the in the back channel. Y'all just speak, speak on it. Speak on it. Speak on it. Speak on it. All right. So they just said, all right. So before you met Nick Cannon, then you have Nickelodeon situations and shit. Hell no. Hell no. Listen, this is what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna say it one more time. I was 18. Nick was 16. Okay, this is way before any of Nick doing any of that. He was trying to get in the game. His first manager, his name was Sam. He was an Arabic guy from Detroit. That's how I met Nick, from his old man, his first manager. Before Will Smith came into the picture, before any of that. Nick was trying to be on, uh, uh, what was that dance show? Uh, uh, Soul Train. He would try to be on Soul Train, and they pick you to be on Soul Train. They make you stand in the line outside, and they pick the people who would go on Soul Train. When he didn't get picked, he would come to the jungles where I used to live, and we used to chop it up and kick it about comedy, and I and I taught him how to do comedy. I taught him how to tell jokes and how to take his style and say jokes in his style. Now, this, this was this was like 2003. So y'all niggas, so y'all niggas think Nick Cannon owned the part of Nickelodeon at six, 16 years old. That's what Hell no. Oh, we thought, we <laughs> thought he was getting paid though. We didn't know he was broke. He's saying he was broke eating oodles and noodles and all that shit. So we try. Now, when I say oodles and noodles, I'm saying me and, me, and my, me and my me and my four man group yeah, was crew. eating oodles yeah, and noodles. His crew. his crew. That's what I'm saying. But but at that time, Nick was a rapper, dude. He had a rap partner. He was a rapper. He he, he was not tied into no type of show business. He was trying to get in show business at this point in time. And his first Nickelodeon job was warming up for Keenan and Cal. I was there. I was there. Good burger. I was there. Everything I'm saying ain't no cap. It's either you like it or you love or you don't. It's whatever, but this is what it is. So again, and it's no disrespect about Nick Cannon. I just was there. Are y'all hearing that part? He's just saying he was there. <laughs> oh, I hear, I, I hear it loud and clear. Oh, I know and intellectuals. Else, I, I and intellectuals else? hear him. I'm talking about and the non-intellectual. Right. What else, girl? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Somebody <laughs> said he was on Nickelodeon in 1998. Somebody okay. forget. Let's in 1998, no, no, sir. You know why? You know why I know that's not to be true because I didn't move to LA to 1996, three days before Tupac got killed. So Nick Cannon was nowhere to be found at that time. Spanky Hayes wasn't nowhere to be found at that time. We was all coming up, all of us. Thank you. So, well, Spanky, can I find you, you following me back, Spanky? Well, on this, uh, I'm new to this. I don't really know how to. I don't really know how to work this, but I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. Yo, hold on, y'all. One mic on King Yo, man. Let him ask his question. You coming to twin birthday? No, I Say it again. You coming to twin birthday? Twin. Oh, the DJ twin. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I didn't hear about it yet. I didn't hear about it. Okay. Hey, Spanky, what side of the city you from in in Detroit? I'm from the west side, Brightmore. Oh, okay, okay. Brightmore. Oh, I yeah, I'm from Schoolcraft, Telegraph area. Yeah, I'm kind of like the same area. I went, I went to Refro High School, that, that, which is uh, Myers yeah. now. Yeah, I got kicked out of Refro. Yeah, Yo, why I went there for a minute. And yeah, and, and so again, guys, I just want to say this one more time. This ain't about to make me feel better or look better or none of that. I'm, we're just talking about comedians and comedy. So I, I put my spill in on what I, my beginning of comedy was what I just shared with y'all. So we can argue all day. But I'm just going to still say the same thing. Yo, oh, Kevin Tate, that's my boo. You know, Kevin Tate from Detroit. Kevin Tate from Detroit. Kevin Tate from Detroit. That's my man. I, love, I know. You know I love me some Kevin. That's my boo. That's my nigga. I didn't know Kevin in Detroit. I met him when he moved to L.A. though. Oh, yeah. Hey, he need to be next. To up. Him and Donovan, they need to be. They need to go and do their damn thing. You back in the city, Spank? Oh, precious. That's my girl. I'm, I'm in Vegas right now. I was just about to say that. What's up, Spanky? What you doing? Yeah. Nick Cannon What's was up? in Men in Black and he did drum line in Can 2002. Can I get a recap real quick? Uh, right. Nigga, that, but, that's, but that's 2002, though. We talking about, I'm talking about 90, in the 90s, the end of the 90s. This is what I'm talking about. Like 2000, yeah, Nick had, well, now let me say this about Nick. Once Nick put his feet on the ground in his, in his comedy shit, he shot up in the air.
So that's why I was never mad at him because he grabbed my hand and took me with him. Now, I could have been mad, but he took me with him. So it was like my only problem with Nick was, you know, if he's Batman, I'm Spider-Man. You can't have Spider-Man as a Robin. You got to go get a Robin. Mm. That makes perfect sense. Yo, so what you doing now? I'm still doing comedy. I just finished a, a, a blockbuster movie coming out soon with uh, Wesley Snipes and Tiffany and Kevin and Bill Bellamy and all, almost everybody we name right now is in this movie, the people that's living. Uh, Faison and all of that. So I did that. I got a movie out on Tubi right now called uh, Two Finesse with uh, Zay Tovin and a whole bunch of uh, Atlanta cats. Uh, and I got a, uh, another, mo another movie that I'm on. Uh, gonna do with tiffany at the end of this summer so you know i'm you know i was retired for six years so i, I just really came back last year and so since i've been since i've been back in the game i did three films and uh got some more films to do and i'm still doing comedy not as much as i want to do it but you know i'm still in the game but you know I, I had to get out the game bro because i felt like i had been disrespected to the mm -hmm. utmost and then so so imagine so so let's take wilding out let's Let's make this a person. So I'm gonna ask the ladies this. So, so think about you. Your ex boyfriend is wilding out, and then you see wilding out fucking all your friends. How would you feel? You you would feel very disrespected. Ooh, hell yeah. Yes. Yeah. So how? So that's the only way I yeah, look at could, wilding out. This is the reason why I'm. I know I'm sound like I'm at you, but it's like you as an employee. So if you if you didn't if you didn't oh, like it, you needed to stop working there. Oh that's my all. god! That, that's exactly what I did, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I did. Y'all, but that's okay. How old is he? Manage. How old is he? He's not listening. I'm listening it's to maybe like yeah. 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 No, no, he's he's Hey, hey you must copy. you must be the number one wilding out fan in the world, bro. Actually, Hell I hate you. Yeah. Respectful, but you know what I'm saying? There you go. what you're I, saying. I, I, it's honestly. not sinking in. He's just hearing what you're saying and it's just sitting on the surface level. Exactly. It's not in. So you got to give him a minute and like next year, <laughs> he'll probably be like, oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hold on, 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 one mic. Because AR, you're making it seem like you really ain't paying attention because you asked the man. If he didn't like it, why didn't he just leave? And he just said earlier in the conversation that he quit. When did he quit? What year? I quit. I quit. Uh, I don't. I can't remember the year exactly, but I was remember. Was it more than five years ago? I was yeah. meal. Well, so why well, the well, fuck are we this. talking about this shit? Yeah. That's my problem. Well, 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 it's a conversation. He's talking about how he bro. started coming out. It's not sinking in, in, brother. Mike, Mike. I just told y'all. Yeah. So, 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 so let me let me clear this. Let me clear this. So basically, kind of what I did in show business is some shit that nobody ever done. Like nobody ever made it to the top or where they feel was the top, and then quit and went the other way. Nobody ever like like in the entertainer's mind, that's like. The stupidest shit in the world to do. Like but suicide. if you feeling dis right, but if you feeling disrespectful and you feeling like nigga, like again, like if y'all heard me yesterday, I said they told me the spanky haze type. So this is the same thing again. If they could take your type and your likeness and your style and your jokes and your presence and your dressing, but don't That's fuck with you, yeah, then what 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 you gonna do? Stand there and take it? No. I couldn't stand there and take it no more. I took it a long time. No, so, but to answer the first question, I can't remember the year that I quit, but I remember it was during the MTV2 era when 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 Wildin' Out went to MTV2. It was around that time, but I don't remember the year. I, I'm a guess and say it was around 2008, 2010, 2012, somewhere around there. Yeah, because I think Corey left for the show, right? Yeah, he had sold the show by then. So it wasn't even Nick's show. So now me complaining to Nick was yeah. for nothing. Because because he couldn't do nothing. And we know for a fact that he couldn't do nothing because when he said the little um, comment on that pod podcast about um, Jewish people, they clipped him, you know what I'm saying? And he couldn't even take it to another network or nothing because uh, MTV owned rights to uh, to the Wild and Now name. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And that ain't yeah, nothing against Nick. Crazy. But first of all, why would you have Professor Griss on your fucking 
podcast anyway. You already know that's that's gonna bring and then because I'm saying this because Nick is already in bed with Jewish people. He's been that for years. He's 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 the uh, uh, exception to the rules. Like because he's put in his work and he's grind for years since I said already since 16. He was with Will Smith at 16. You understand what I'm saying? He was that this dude has been in the game. He's been grinding. Nothing, no disrespect to Nick. So, but if you've been in bed with these guys for years, how could you say that about somebody like that? This is where your money comes from. And if you and if you think I'm lying, why Nick don't wear the turban no more? They made that nigga take that shit off. Period. Like nigga, first of all, you gonna talk about the niggas that's feeding you, and then you gonna wear the stupid ass turban, man. Take that shit off. Hey, he I don't got, wear it no more. Hey, I got a question for you, brother. It ain't it ain't about Nick, but you say you're a comedian, right? Of course. If you don't know that, man, you should ask. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, bro. Google him. God damn. I'm no, I'm, no, I'm, fuck, I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you, guys. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Now I was about to say, just tell us about the grind of 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 of, of being a comedian, like the grind of it. You the know grind of the uh, uh, the grind of being a comedian is is what I missed the most. Because, like I said earlier, I don't do comedy as much as I, I I would like to. To be a comedian, man, you gotta go on stage every day, man. At least if you can, twice a day. Three times a day if you can. This is the most disrespected art form in show business. Everybody got an auntie that think they funny. Everybody got an uncle that think they funny. Some of y'all girls, baby, first baby daddy, funny as a motherfucker. The, so so the, the rule of being funny to humans is like a, a, not a thought. Like, fuck that, I can be funny. Any Everybody thinks they're funny. Everybody. So to the grind of comedy is to go on stage in front of strangers. Anybody can be funny in front of their friends. If we all smoking a blunt, we can all be funny. But to go in front of 20 motherfuckers who don't know you and don't give a fuck, somebody in the audience mama just died. Somebody in the audience boyfriend just went to jail. Somebody, and you make all of them laugh at the same fucking thing. That's power. But you, but you have to perfect the craft. You have to perfect it. It don't just come. You get, like me. I've been retired for years. I don't expect to just go on stage and get a standing ovation. When I, when I'm half as funny as I used to be, I feel good because I know this is a fucking grind. D Ray, let's go back to D Ray. D Ray goes on stage every day. If you follow him on Instagram, you see he's in another city or another stage every fucking day and, and that ain't for money that's for him to keep that position that he got mm -hmm. because the next guy could be just as funny okay back to Dave Chappelle and this ain't no dirt on Dave Chappelle I love Dave Chappelle a good friend of mine Dave Chappelle never lets me open up for him because of one incident at the improv uh years ago I was just on fire just smoked the blunt High is a motherfucker, feeling good. I go up after, right before Dave Chappelle and catch fire. When he get on stage, he don't do he don't do Dave Chappelle good. He come up to me and buy me a drink, but that's what niggas do when they kind of don't feel you like that. He come up to buy me a drink and start asking me questions. So when you start, cause cause he wanna know about me. Not like who's this funny motherfucker? I don't know. That can hurt you. Like you could go in front of a funny motherfucker and they either gonna do two things. Tell niggas don't fuck with you because you funny and they couldn't follow you, or they're going to take everything that they heard you say that fit them and they're going to do it. Bro, I ain't going to hold you. Say that shit again, bro. Say that shit again. But you, you, you putting too much power in other people's hands, bro. No, you bro, this is the game. This is the game. This ain't Target. Young power. brother, young brother. This ain't Target. This ain't Walmart we talk about. You got to get your business straight. That's all. Like, you know, we all do. We all do. <laughs> you put you 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 too much power in other people's hands for your career, but, bro. But this is what I'm trying to tell you, young brother. You exactly. obviously don't know anything about what I'm telling you about. Nah, I do. Like, no, you, you, can't, you, really you, can't, you can't know about it if you just said that to me. The the, the reason why older comedians, like we said, uh, Will, uh, not Will Smith, but uh, Eddie Griffin. We mentioned Eddie Griffin earlier. The reason why Eddie Griffin would let a Spanky Hayes open up for him because he ain't 
locked into the streets. He don't know what he probably don't fuck with Instagram. He probably don't know what a TikTok is. So he hear young you hear the young youth talk about what's going on in their life so you can get up to speed to what's going on. Why, That's why, just how it go. Why don't you just build your I didn't make that I didn't make that rule. That's just the rule that why never don't changed. You build your platform so they can open up for you though. Yeah, but uh, uh, Eddie Griffin open enough for me don't make sense to Eddie Griffin. Because I heard of Eddie Griffin. I ain't never heard of you, bro, respectfully. Bro. I mean, and that's fine. But to me, hey, it don't seem I, like you I'll got your junk point you big enough. Shit. Nigga, what? hold on. Let me chime in on the Eddie Griffin shit because, nigga, Spanky had me out. And where was we at? Like, Connecticut or some shit? And, and he opened up for Eddie, nigga. He had us backstage with Eddie. We was in Eddie's private dressing room smoking weed and all that shit. So yeah. I already seen how Eddie treat, treat Spanky. He was calling all of us nephew after he was... After but Spanky you explain like, oh, something to family, somebody so. who ain't did their own research. Like everybody know about Spanky. Everybody know about Spanky, bro. bro. Like Spanky, bro. Like bro. Like you must yeah, be so like 13 or something. That's fine. Yo, who the fuck is this nigga, yo? It's crazy how non comedians can tell a professional comedian about the game. There's a lot of weird on stage. I need to get these weird on stage. Hey, 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 Oh, okay. hey, let me clear this up for the brother. Let me clear this up for the brother. <laughs> he started, Listen, he the started power... in the cannon and he made Dave so nervous. Hold up, hold up. Let me speak. Let him speak. Okay, so let, let me just let me just try to clear it up a little bit more for you, brother. So when, when you say the power, let me let me say this. This it's an unknown power that we all have that we tap into. Some people don't even know how to tap into it. Some people, we look at people and that inspire us to tap into it. So what I'm saying to you is, even though a king, let, let's go from a king that, that rules the land, it's no way possible that the king knows every fucking thing that's going on. He has to go reach out to the people and have somebody from the people come to him, get close to him, so he can understand what's going on. I'm saying that to say this. We the power the power is in the the, the tongue, bro. Like the you the youth is is the power. It's the young yo young mind doing putting something towards what I already do is 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 the power, bro. Like you could talk about you could talk about rappers that I don't know nothing about. You could talk about situations that I don't know nothing about because I'm older than you and my life is different. Right now I got a wife and kids. That's what I focus on ninety percent of the time. So I don't I don't know what comedians are talking about. I don't know what they're doing. Like I said earlier, I don't do comedy as much as I want to. So I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know, but it, I won't know. I won't get that power. I won't be able to tap into it until I go to the comedy clubs and see what they're talking about. But that's my fault because I don't watch comedians. So I don't know. I don't want to know what they're talking about. I only want to know what I'm talking about. I only want, I only care about my powers within me that I can reach and touch. I don't care about nobody else's power because we, it's only one person who gets the gig. Now, let me break this down real fast. It's only one, especially for black comedians. So let's go back to Mike Epps. Mike Epps was the king of the world about 10, 12, 15 years ago. King of the world. Okay. So after Mike Epps, it was, it was the first Kevin Hart. Not the Kevin Hart now. It's the first Kevin Hart. The soul playing Kevin Hart. The uh the movie that he did with Dame Dash and them Kevin, Paper Soldiers Kevin Hart. Okay, so they couldn't sell Kevin. So what did they do? They got Cat. They took it from Cat. Kevin gave it to Cat Williams. Cat Williams was uncontrollable. They could not control Cat Williams. Whatever they no, I don't give. A, I'm, I don't care about what you're saying. I'm not doing what you say. So they did. So they got tired of Cat. They took it from Cat and gave it back to Kevin. So that just lets you know, bro, it's only one position. Niggas like Dave Chappelle already got his position. Niggas like Steve Harvey already got their position. I'm talking about the people who still fighting for position. Martin Lawrence been had it. He never was in that fight. He been had his position. I'm talking about niggas that still fighting for a position. Cat Williams not no more, but as I said, they already gave it to him and took it from him. Uh, position. Kevin, That's all I'm saying. That's all. Kevin Hart already had it twice. Since I've been a comedian, I've never seen somebody right. blow up twice. 
And just like they fought, you could fight too, bro. Like, hey, I, I, and that's I, it, bro. It ain't, this, this ain't nothing you can control. That, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying about power. Like, like Jordan, okay. Jordan be trying to score. What the fuck do you think he's doing? I'm not working. What are you talking about? <laughs> but but you you mentioned Michael Jordan, but Michael Jordan didn't really check nobody. Dan Marley, come on, my nigga, come on. You can't mention, you can't bring that up in this situation. It's not the same thing, bro. Can I ask you a question though. I, I know you said you uh you was getting. We get on you later for that Jordan slander. No, nah, no, nah, hey, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, hey, listen, Jordan, no, listen, Jordan. When Jordan, I'm saying you said you was you was getting frustrated because how you was cheating. Like he's not. He's not complaining about niggas trying to stop. What are you doing? He ain't complaining, on, nigga. He telling you a story. That's it. Yeah. What are you nah, doing? I'm talking about you said you was getting, listen, you said you was getting frustrated and you just quit. What was your plan in quitting? Or did you just was like, man, fuck this. I'm tired of being mistreated and misused and I just quit. Or did you have some kind of plan that you wanted to go about? I did not being respected. Y'all not listening. God damn. Yeah. That was a real question. Let it sink in, brother. Just listen, brother. No, you don't. Then, I listen, time out. He said he quit. I've been fucking listening to what he's saying. But I'm asking when he got mad and frustrated for being mistreated, did he quit and have a, something else that he wanted to do? Or was he just sick of the bullshit of like, quit? I'm done. Yeah, that's he a real stopped. question right there, Spike. He said he just stopped. Y'all didn't hear him when he said that? He stopped. 2008, 9, 12, he stopped. Yeah, just retired, listen, bro. He, he, just just he, listen. he wanted to go baseball. He went to do baseball. Jordan retired. He was like, fuck it, I'm done. <laughs> Yo, this is this is how wild Clubhouse is, though, right? You get this is yeah. oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick, real quick. Real quick, real quick because, instead of just listening to the story and stop trying yeah. to pick it apart. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Nigga get on here <laughs> and express himself, tell his truth, give you